Myra, welcome back to WDS. I'll be at this time for a little extended conversation. Thank you for joining us. Much appreciated. Thank you for having me. Well, I think you summed it up very well in your piece, which I saw on realclearreligion.com, which is similar to realclearpolitics.com, a subsidiary site. Uh, as our divided nation votes, pray for a peaceful outcome here on the day before the election. What are you thinking might happen either way? It's anybody's guess, but I think you can just tell the, the, the feeling right now of the nation is, is fear. I, I think people are just afraid. There's been so many news accounts, particularly of, of storefronts being boarded up in major cities. And that's never happened, at least in my lifetime that I can remember. And how about you? Do you remember ever having elections and people afraid and having storefronts boarded up? It's, no. It's a new phenomenon. The- not because of elections, but we had a rough summer here in Chicago, as a lot of major mm-hmm. urban areas did, obviously. And I know for a fact, I just uh, heard from a friend of mine who's downtown, a few miles uh, south of me, uh, that they are, in fact, uh, some stores are boarding up on Michigan Avenue, which I think is a real shame, because our republic is all, always dependent on the loyal opposition of the vanquished, the loyal opposition of those who lost the election, knowing that in two or four years, they were going to have another chance. hmm hmm Yes, that's the beauty of our country. Also, the, the peaceful transition of power. I, I mean, I've written about this recently that I think one of the greatest moments in American history, and it happens every four years, is when at an inaugural ceremony, you have the current president, the incumbent, whether he won or not, and you have former presidents. And they're all there, standing there. And I just think that sends such a wonderful signal to the rest of the world that that our democracy works. We work in a very, in, in a very calm way to go from huh. shifting of power, and it's always been one of the great moments, I believe, in you know, in our great democracy. Uh, whether that's going to happen this time, I don't know. That's what people are, I think, are very afraid of. How have we reached this point, Myra, uh, where now it's not a sure thing? Uh, we've had, we've had tough uh, fought races previously. In 2000, it took us, I think, 28 or 29 days Mm. to decide who won the presidency. (laughs) Where are we now in 2020? What's happened? And I know that's a big question and it could take hours to answer, but uh, thumbnail sketch. But let's talk about the big issues is that our country, we thought we were polarized in 2000. And now I think we're, you know, on steroids (laughs) in terms of polarization. And I think a lot of that has to do with the technology revolution that has happened, which of course has been the internet and the instant news and how everyone's a journalist and how everyone can get in the act and, you know, fake news and what's, people just don't know what even to believe anymore. I mean, the news, there's no such thing as news. It's like just everyone's opinion, just kind of thrown into a big pot. And so that, I think that has created um, where we are today and also Um, you you can't ignore the personality of someone like Donald Trump who thrives on chaos. I mean, chaos is his brand and you can't downplay the fact that he has a lot of quote unquote passionate followers and many of them are my good friends. (laughs) So as I'm a Republican. Um, So yeah, I mean, those are, I would say some of the biggest, some of the biggest reasons why I think where we are. I don't, I don't mind conservatives. I don't mind evangelicals. I don't mind uh, passionate uh, supporters of Donald Trump. I don't like people that are going to run a bus off a highway in Texas mm-hmm. or kidnap the Michigan governor. I just call them morons, not necessarily uh, Trump supporters or liberals or what have you, but we've empowered the stupid in America now. Mm-hmm. We've always had the stupid, but now they can find each other thanks to social media. Mm-hmm. I don't know who thought that was a good idea. Right, right. It's the beauty and the, and the awfulness of, of the internet. Uh, but, you know, as far as what you're talking about, I'm particularly like, you know, a plot to kidnap the governor of Michigan. I mean, that would have been like the biggest news. And the fact that it was kind of, it was kind of a one day story. I mean, that shows how far we've gone in a really bad direction, I, in my opinion. I mean, and then the FBI was sort of denigrated by the president. I mean, he just kind of blew it off. <laughs> like why yeah, are you yeah. investigating this <laughs> may have been a problem may not have been a problem we're talking with Meyer Adams she's a media producer and conservative political and religious writer you can read her at realclearreligion.com also at townhall.com um, in light of what happens tomorrow whether Biden wins in a wipeout or Trump has a narrow victory 
I'm, I'm hoping that everybody just settles down. I think it'd be better for the nation, frankly, if it is a overwhelming victory for one side or the other, mm -hmm. just so we can put away all the conspiracy theories. Uh, theories. What do you think? No, I agree. In fact, I read a, a piece uh, last week that the military wants it to be blowout one way or the other, because anything in the mushy middle, uh, particularly if it's real close and it takes several days and it all comes down to God forbid, Pennsylvania or Florida, um, that's gonna be a real mess. And unfortunately you have Pennsylvania, which is now, I mean, I read a headline today that said, you know, as the nation, as Pennsylvania goes, so goes the nation. Um, you know, and Pennsylvania doesn't even start counting their votes until, correct me if I'm wrong, is it when the polls close or is it like election day, like at a certain time? No, I think it's when the polls not, close in, in Pennsylvania. I'm not positive about that, but it's they, they don't start uh, throughout the day. They wait. And it might take up to three days to figure out Pennsylvania. It, it, I mean, something like that just makes my blood boil because you would have thought that they would have passed a law quickly, some emergency legislation to start it earlier, at least like maybe at 7 a.m. on election day. Because well, this, this phenomena of early voting, I mean, I live in Florida now. I've been living in Florida for several years now. And I still live in Virginia. But in Florida, I mean, we've been voting by mail for yeah. forever. I mean, it's not yeah. a big, it hasn't been a big deal. And some states have done it well and done it a lot and done it often. Or did, oh, that's all they do. Uh, and others just like Pennsylvania, just, you know, kind of joining the game. And, you know, obviously they're just, they haven't been ready for it. We just have to pray it doesn't come down to Pennsylvania. Um, because it is going to be, that will be a complete nightmare. Well, it's a nightmare if you don't have somebody in place on both sides to say, take it easy, everybody. We're going to count the votes. It'll all be okay. The sun will come up in the east and we'll go down in the west and the country will continue to churn uh, the economy. It'll be okay. We'll find out who's going to be the next president. We, it took us 30 days in 2000. came down to your state then too. What are you uh, feeling as far as uh, on the ground in Florida. What are you seeing and what are you hearing? Mike? Oh, first of all, I didn't live here in 2000. Um, right. We, we've only lived here since 2000. I've lived here since 2007. Um, what do I feel like Florida? Well, you know, Florida is, as, as Tim Russett used to say, Florida, Florida, Florida. Um, nobody knows what's gonna happen in Florida. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I can say this, whoever wins, it's probably gonna be by, you know, one or two percentage points. You know, that's all I can say. <laughs> I mean, basically last time Trump won by 1.2%. We had our governor, uh, Governor DeSantis won by, correct me if I'm wrong, I think it was about 25,000 yeah, votes. Yeah, um, it just it always comes down to, yeah, Scott also. Mm -hmm. It always comes down to, you know, the bare margin in Florida. And um, I mean, something that is kind of a wild card that a lot of people haven't talked about is Florida has been just gaining population uh, particularly a lot of retired baby boomers are, are coming down to Florida or people escaping, you know, um, New York or New Jersey, all the high taxes. Mm -hmm. So Florida is increasing in population quite a bit. So where are those people are coming from and are they going to bring their old voting habits? And if they're coming from blue states and they're going to probably vote blue again, um, and then you do have an increase still in, you know, Puerto Ricans and, and a lot of Hispanics. Um, so we don't know what's really going to happen. O only thing we do know is Florida will be Florida. <laughs> yeah. Well, I have a. I was golfing with a, a lot of guys who have uh, homes near Naples, Marco Island, uh -huh. and they're mm -hmm. all they're all heading south now. They're still registered to vote here in Illinois, but I can guarantee you, with the income tax situation, both in Illinois and in Florida, I suspect mm -hmm. they'll all be changing their residency here sooner rather than later to oh, move yeah. to the Sunshine yeah. State. No, I read some amazing statistic. I, I actually forget what it was. It was just some phenomenal number in the thousands of new residents, like every day coming to Florida. Yeah, yeah. I don't know Do how, you, how the peninsula is gonna support all these people. I think it's gonna sink into the sea uh, because it just can't support endless numbers of people. It just Do you uh, Do you read Carl Hyacin? Um, I actually don't usually read him, but a friend of mine yeah. has been yeah. bugging me to read his book. Yeah. Um, yeah. His new book, I forget the name of it, but my friend like made me read it. You well, have to get this <laughs> yeah, the new one. The new one centers on current events. I won't ruin it for you, but Carl Heiss is a genius, and uh -huh. he puts he puts Florida in perspective. Myra, thank you for your time this afternoon. Uh -huh. I much appreciate it, and uh, we'll read more at Real Clear Religion. As a deeply religious person, or Real Clear Politics, <laughs> or Real Clear po or Real Clear Politics, or Townhall.com. Yeah, yeah. On Sunday, I write on, on Townhall. I write a Bible study on Townhall. So, but I know you're offering up prayers for our country, no matter how tomorrow's election turns out. Mm -hmm. Thy will be done. I mean, that that's really all anyone can say. It's like, it's, as my husband likes to say, he is in control. 
Okay. Well, I, I just hope it's decided sooner rather than later. Either way. Thank you, Myra. Thank nice you. talking with you again. Hey, thank you so much. Bless our nation, everybody. <laughs> Bye. That's Myra Adams joining us here on WDLS.